Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another one of my videos. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you guys a very important video. Uh, recently, in my car, I started hearing a little ticking noise. Uh, when I put my ear really close to the engine, I would hear this little tick, 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 tick noise. I honestly, personally thought it was knocking my engine, and I scared the crap out of me. I was like, "No, why? Please!" You know, I drove you well. You know, don't don't break down on me. And uh, I took it to the dealership, and they told me, "No, man, it's it's lifters. If it was knocking your engine, you would have had a check engine light." Uh, I was relieved. I was relieved. They told me it would still be around 600 bucks to replace the lifters, considering that they are very deep inside the engine. I told them I'd think about it. I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I found, you know, I did a lot of extensive research on how, you know, to quiet lifters down. And, uh, you know, I got a lot of do this, do that, do this, do that. Now, I have hydraulic lifters in my car. So... I did read a lot about that on the Mazda forums, a lot of them on different other forums, and I came and I decided to try a way. Now the way I did try ended up working. Uh, I'm going to be showing you how my lifters sound. Now I'm sorry, they're not going to sound as high as they did before. You will still be able to hear it just a little bit. That's because this thing did work for me. They were loud. Again, you know, I thought my engine was knocking. Um, and now thankfully it's reduced significantly. I mean, I cannot... It's amazing. You know, this doesn't affect your performance of your car. It's it's not a big deal. A lot of people just go on with their lives and just use it. This thing's got 135,000 on it. Needed a couple more years before I buy the newer Mazda 6 because these cars are amazing. And uh, so I'm going to be showing you guys exactly what happened. I'm going to be showing you guys before. I'm going to be showing you guys after. And I'm going to be showing you the exact way I did it. And hopefully it works for you. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies that I'm going to be showing you their products. I'm just showing you what worked for me. Yes, I used Seafoam. And I know a lot of people object using Seafoam. I know a lot of you guys out there think that Seafoam will destroy your engine more than it will help. But to be completely honest with you guys, it worked for me. All you have to do is get your Seafoam and you put it in your oil uh, uh, fill. And... Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, yeah, a couple instructions I'm going to be telling you guys on when you're using seafoam. For every quart of oil, you put one ounce of seafoam. Now, my car holds four and a half quarts, so I would put four and a half ounces. If you have the Mazda 6 version that's got the 3.0 engine V6, it takes six quarts of oil, so you would have to put six ounces of this stuff. Um... That's pretty much all the instructions. And another big, big thing to always uh, know is that you can't just put seafoam in your car and just run with it. Seafoam is made uh, to break down all that grime and all that carbon buildup and whatnot. And at the same time, it breaks down your oil. So if you put this stuff in and you drive two, thirty thousand 30,000 miles and you change your oil, you're going to notice it's like water. And that's because it's breaking down everything in there. Um, instructions say to drive 100 to 300 miles after you put seafoam in. Uh, and that's exactly what I did. What I did was I went in my car, reset my trip, put it out, put it at zero, and I'm going to go 300 miles because my oil is just 1,000 miles. So it can take the beating of seafoam for a, quite a bit. Um, now, like I did say, I used seafoam, but I did use it in my own way. I didn't use... I, I did... Uh, what they recommended, but I also took it another step. After a hundred miles of putting four and a half quarts, I put an extra two quarts in here. Um, and then when I hit 200 miles, I put another two quarts, uh, two ounces of this, and I put two ounces of Marvel Mystery Oil. I've heard a lot of good stuff about that uh, company and uh, of their Mar Marvel Mystery Oil, so I decided to try it. So just to recap, I put four and a half ounces, drove it a hundred miles, then put two ounces, drove it another hundred miles, then put two ounces, two ounces, and drove it like 110 miles, and then I changed the oil. Um, and it worked amazing. I mean, you can't even hear the lifters anymore. Maybe it's by coincidence it worked. Now, my theory behind it was I put seafoam, let it, you know, in the beginning, I put four and a half ounces, let that all mix up with the oil, you know, break down. Uh, and then, you know, after 100 miles, I gave it another boost. I put another two ounces in there, you know, just to make sure I got it. And then in the end, I topped it off with two ounces, two ounces. 
I mean, it's a good thing because in my my engine can take that because when I change my oil, I always make sure it's in the half, you know, between low and high. So that way I can afford to put these stuff without really overfilling the engine. Uh, so in the end, I did use, you know, quite a bit. I used, what, eight and a half ounces of this stuff and two ounces of that. So that's ten and a half ounces extra went into my engine. But again, I could afford it. Always check your uh, dipstick. Make sure you're not overfilling your engine. That's the most important thing. Um, and then it's time to change your oil. Now, not only do they say change your oil, but they say change your filter. Heck, your filter is probably more important because you're going to break down all that carbon, right? Where is it going to get clogged up? It's going to get clogged up in your filter. So you want to make sure when you do this stuff, when you do your seafoam and Marvel Mystery Oil setup, make sure when you change your oil after 300 or so miles, make sure you change your filter. Super important. Probably put a high quality filter. I got a mobile one filter. It's like $15. It's, it's pretty expensive, but it's going to be worth it. Uh, ticking noise is gone, guys. So that's the important thing. I mean, I bought this for 8 bucks, that for 5 I mean, it's 13 bucks. I Trust me, I'd rather spend 13 bucks and change my oil than put around 400 from the dealership. Um, so that was my way. Again, I'm going to tell you guys one more time. I put four and a half ounces of this. And then I put, after 100 miles, I put another two ounces of this. And then after another 100 miles, I put two ounces of this and two ounces of that. Um, and the noising lifters are gone. I mean, and it's really simple. All right, guys, I told you guys I would show you how this thing sounds. Now, I am putting it close to cylinder three because that's where a lot of the noise is coming from. Not sure if you were able to hear it again. I am doing this when it's almost when near when the result should be in. I don't know when you can hear when my revs go down. Uh, maybe towards a thousand one hundred or a thousand five hundred try to hear a little ticking noise hear that that's that ticking noise See, now it's just a running engine normally. Then there's that little bouncing noise in the background. Um, so here's the sound, here's how my car sounds now. Uh, no lifters, no noise, just a normal running engine. I took the cover off because sometimes it does mask a little bit noise. That's me breathing, that white smoke. It's really cold out here in Illinois. But uh, yeah, no more ticking noise. Just a really good running engine right now. I should probably clean that sea foam out of there. So if you guys do have any comments or questions, Please comment them below and I'll make sure to answer them. Thanks for watching.